Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome to In Violence, a podcast where we explore how faith and health, both physical and mental, intertwine in our daily lives and how we can finally find balance as Muslims. I'm Asya, your host, but you probably know me as the Mizen, a safe space I created online where I've been sharing my experiences and advice on how to live a more mindful, sustainable, and balanced life. At this point, you're probably going to think that girl is obsessed <laughs> with the concept of balance, especially considering that El Mizen in Arabic literally translates as the balance. And although, yes, I, I I do like things to be branded accordingly. <laughs> I genuinely feel like that is too often forgotten about as Muslims. I've never shared this in details before, but let me tell you the real backstory behind all of this. So let's go back to February 15th, 2020. It's midnight, my friends are out dating, partying or whatever for Valentine's Day, And I'm alone in my small London room, realizing that I'm turning 26, and I am not happy. And as for all my birthdays, I started to have a bit of an existential crisis. I'm sure many of you will relate to this, but um, as the stubborn, independent, oldest daughter than I am, I didn't want to tell anybody. And... Okay, this is something that I, I rarely address vocally, but I feel like that's important to say. I had struggled with my weight and body image my whole life, um, with only being seen as the smart, funny, and trustworthy friend, um, which, again, is something I feel like a lot of women are going to relate to. Um, and honestly, while I was in a place where I didn't have to feel that way anymore, I think I clearly hadn't healed from my teenage years traumas and I remember that day, that very moment, I started tearing up pretty badly and I started asking myself <laughs> typical questions like, why am I 26 and still not married? Why am I stuck in a body I don't like? Why am I not thin? Why is no man capable of loving me or appreciating the fact that I am serious and value marriage so much. And then it got to a point where I was just criticizing everything I didn't like about my life. For example, I was asking myself things like, why don't I have as much money as those around me? Because I used to be in places where, or I should say schools, where there were a lot of wealthy people. It's been the case most of my life. Or I also ask myself, why is everyone so neglectful of religion, Islam? And that was because every time I would meet someone that is Muslim, the person didn't hold Islam as close to their heart as I did. And I didn't understand why Allah would put me in such situations and challenge me so much. And I think I was so overwhelmed by this negativism is that even a word in english <laughs> i'm sorry you guys i th i think you, most of you know this but i am french so sometimes i just say things and i'm not even sure if the word exists in, in english but hopefully inshallah they, it, it does <laughs> so yeah i was overwhelmed by all this negativism and honestly i i felt very depressed I, I didn't even focus on what I had actually achieved and the things I was proud of when everyone was so supportive. I, I just I just didn't care. I only focused on the things I didn't have and didn't like. But you know what, subhanAllah, I think deep down, I was feeling a sense of guilt. And that day, I remember, it wasn't time to pray, but I did something that I I, I have always done whenever I I just reached a low point in my life and that was talking to Allah. So I remember I got up, I took my, my prayer rug and I 
I don't even remember if I prayed or not, honestly, but I think I just, I just went to Sujun and started crying. And I feel like this is, again, something a lot of people will relate to because Sujun is like magical, subhanAllah. You're just going to put your head on the ground and you feel so vulnerable, but also so close to your Lord, subhanAllah. And um, that's, I remember that's what I did today, but I think I was crying so much that night that I don't remember everything exactly. The one thing I would say, though, is that this time was very different for me. So I am not going to tell you that my sadness <laughs> magically disappeared. And well, this is something that we will address throughout the podcast. You are allowed to have these emotions and even the prophets had them, you know, so it's OK to, to feel that way. You, you at the end of the day, you are just human. But holding onto Allah's rope is what makes it all easier and immensely helps with the healing process. So it didn't just disappear, but subhanAllah, it planted the seed in my heart. And don't get me wrong, I've honestly, I've always deeply cherished being Muslim. I've been lucky to be taught Islam in a way that is caring, respectful and open, but I think because everyone else around me has such a difficult time with it, I just started asking myself two questions. Why is everyone not seeing the beauty of our deen? And why are we so attached to this worldly matters? And I think it was the first time in my life that I had actually thought about my attachment to this dunya. Like before that, I had always thought about my... How am I going to say this? I, I guess like my tangible acts of Ibeda, like my my visible and and physical practice. So praying, fasting, giving sadaqah, not drinking alcohol, preserving myself for marriage, things like this that basically people can see, like proper actions, you know. But it was pretty much it. Like other than that, my focus was on how to go to the best schools, how to earn a consequent wage, and when was the next after work I could go to to network, and when was I going to get married, all those things. And now I realize I just didn't have as much taqwa, like Allah's consciousness, as I should have. And I wouldn't say I, I didn't have any, I, I, I certainly did, but not enough and objectively speaking islam was part of my life but not the center of it and i think that's when i realized why i didn't feel balanced and i don't know i think it just clicked so in april 2020 two weeks after leaving london to come home to paris and experience our first lockdown this seems like forever ago now that, that I think about it, subhanAllah. Um, but yeah, it, it was during the first lockdown that I created the Mizen. And I think my problem-solving, entrepreneurial, love-to-help-people spirit, <laughs> but mostly Allah's mercy and guidance pushed me to create the space that I didn't like, didn't feel like existed at the time i think i just needed someone to be relatable and raw without exposing her sins or sharing her whole life online and just you know experiences and advice for us to grow in all aspects of our lives and and become better muslimas in our hearts and subhanallah ever since i created this page everything changed like my life is not the same at all I, sometimes i think about the person i used to be and I'm like, she wouldn't believe that you would be that person today. Um, but I wouldn't I wouldn't have it any other way. SubhanAllah, like, I, I feel incredibly blessed, alhamdulillah. But, um, you know, I think about the trials that I went through over the past few years. And they were way harder than the one that I mentioned to you at the beginning of, of this episode. And the one that I used to, to live. Um, like, for example... Um, if back then I heard that my dad was, was sick and that he was going to die, 
I I don't I'm not sure I would have handed handled it <laughs> so well. Um and I mean, you know, losing a parent is 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 really hard, but in hindsight, I really feel like I handled this much better than I would have if I lived it before and much better that I used to handle other issues that were not as as bad and same for for hijab for example you know I started wearing hijab a year after opening the account exactly a year after opening the account and I lost dear friends that I never thought I wouldn't be part of my life anymore today and yet I've never felt more confident and more at peace and I think I truly believe that that is because the more you trust Allah the more you will trust yourself and you know of course I mean I'm only human right and it it would be a lie to say that I always have it together I always say this on the account you guys know I if I don't get into the details of what I'm experiencing, I always try to share the lessons I take from it. And when I share the lessons, I try to be transparent about the fact that I'm only human. And even the pe- best people that you're going to see online or in your life are only human. Prophets were only human. We, we, we don't always have it all together. But I really wanted you to see that we are all the same and that we all go through this same roller coaster that is life and I think that's what led me to create the podcast and you know I <laughs> I knew I didn't want this to be just me talking although this first episode is literally just me talking <laughs> but um the reason why Mo- like most episodes or conversations is because one I didn't want to create a content that I wouldn't consume myself and when it comes to podcasts I tend to prefer conversations and interviews and two because I really really wanted to add value and uh, answer an existing need and I mean you guys probably are probably aware of this but podcasts have become incredibly popular and despite the number of requests that I got ever since creating the the page I wanted it to be something that is useful and not just me jumping on the bandwagon Um, and I'm not really sure I can pinpoint when was the spark for me to finally take the plunge and create the podcast but I know that with the page growing I started connecting with wonderful Muslim women who I thought had so much to share in addition to what I was already sharing with you guys um, that I had to do something they had so many beautiful lessons about faith and health that I just I just needed to talk to them and share the conversations with you and you know Again, as someone who slowly learned to love and care for the body Allah entrusted her with and is still learning to do that, I knew I wanted to talk about that physical aspect of health. And as someone who's always been interested in mental health, had her own struggle and was aware of how often it is minimized and neglected in the Muslim world, I knew I had to use this as a means to democratize and open up the conversation even more. And and all of this, which I like to think is a holistic approach to life as a Muslima, um, really aligns with with my mission to grow with my sisters from all around the world, but most importantly, represents what Islam is about, you know, I always say Islam is more than just a religion, it, it's it's an actual way of life, you know, everything that you do, it should be framed by by Islam, and the moment you, you realize that, and you start embracing it, subhanAllah, your life changes in the most beautiful ways, and this is something that I'm so grateful for, and I'm hoping through 
all the work that I've been doing, that you feel the same way, inshallah. But right now, I've been talking maybe for 10, 15, 20 minutes. I'm not even sure. Um, you guys know I'm, I can be pretty talkative. I think it's easier for me because... I'm an introvert and it's easier for me to, well, first of all, it's easier for me to write, but it's, it's easier for me to talk by myself. Um, but when it comes to talking to people, I, I get nervous. I love people, but I get nervous talking to, to people that I don't know. But anyway, right now you might be wondering, what can we expect from this podcast that you've been teasing us about and that you seem excited about? I'm excited but nervous. Um, but this season, we are going to talk about an array of different things from spiritual topics like reverting to Islam, self-confidence, dealing with spiritual ruts, to heartbreak, healing from past trauma, um, but also things like dealing with sexual desires, nutrition, and high discipline and physical performances. Honestly, imbalance is truly about finding yourself, bonding with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and embracing the blessing it is to be a Muslim woman. Um, this is something that I, I say a lot, you know, but knowing your value as a Muslim can be hard, uh, especially in a world that is dominated by men but islam teaches us every day that we are special and that allah gives his toughest battles to his toughest soldiers and when you think about it that way you can realize how much he loves us subhanallah but um when i say this i always feel like i need to <laughs> i need to say that um please don't get me wrong because this is absolutely not me saying that we are better than men and I always say that there's a reason why Allah says in the Quran that he created us in pairs. We truly complete each other and we should learn to grow together. Um, you know, if you know me, you know how romantic I am. You know how much I love to talk about love um, and how excited I am to be with the one Allah chose for me, inshallah. But um, right now, honestly, I'm thinking about my dad because and I'm going to try to not get emotional um here but i will forever be grateful for him uh, because he was a real man who always supported me who truly never failed to show his love to us and never made us feel like less because we are women if honestly if anything he truly made me feel like i was able to achieve anything if I did my best and trusted Allah with the rest but one of the things I loved most about my dad was that he was a beautiful example of giving without expecting to receive um, and this is something that I really admired in him and a trait that I hope I, I, I took from him in some ways but subhanAllah it is truly when you don't expect it that Allah gives back to you. And, you know, Allah has done that to me with the page. And I have absolutely no doubt that he will do that with this podcast too, inshallah. So I truly pray that you will love this season as much as I enjoyed working on it and recording it. I hope you will feel inspired in many ways by the incredible sisters I'll be chatting with, inshallah. And I ask Allah to bless our lives in the most beautiful ways, to increase our knowledge. And of course, I had to finish on that note to allow us to finally find balance, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. ستعود جميلة تلك الأيام نملوها حبا عطفا وأمان وتعود الأرض لحالها لجمالها Just a side note, 
I apologize for being so stressed. This is really new to me and I'm very nervous. And secondly, just know that I recorded this only a few hours before releasing the podcast. That just goes to show that we don't have it all together. <laughs> okay, bye guys.